might be probably worth it to to consider it a bit later uh, because it's I think it's a much to do also with the networking process how you create I mean I mean how you want to approach this networking uh, what you want to achieve with this uh, you bring all your own identities uh, national identities or you try to figure out something different um, so the European Union is building a European research area. So we are not talking, we are talking about national based uh, research or tradition, but we are more and more engaged in a broader perspective. Uh, maybe because I come from an universalistic organization, so I am very much oriented to, to what Professor said and uh, they emphasize about the fact that in particular conditions, like uh, those that we live and rest in past in, in Southeast Europe, in the Baltics in particular, we must be very careful the, the word we use, not for question of complexes, mm -hmm. but for uh, sometimes as a uh, diplomacy of language. And uh, if I say Serbian, I say Albanian, <laughs> you know. And um, many times we have been stuck also in negotiation because of terminology. And uh, in certain particular areas of of the world, including the, the, the Balkans. So I, I would uh, like, um, personally, but I don't want to, to get into much civil national based things, but I, I very much uh, agree with this kind of uh, uh, sensitiveness to the employment of words, first or later, Serbia, Albania, etc. Because history was very much in the middle of, as you say, rightly pointed out, uh, of political purposes, it was misused, it was used as an instrument to justify one political stance against the other. And uh, if I think that we have to rewrite the history of Southeast Europe and the Balkans in particular. I, I would agree with Kostas' uh, comment about the way we have to use uh, the objective uh, before science. Uh, I think it would be better to use uh, science in Greece, for example, or science in Italy, or science in Germany. But we have also to take into consideration that, uh, especially uh, in uh, some areas and some, in some periods, uh, what we feel as science in uh, these regions and in these periods is not the same in uh, these several parts of uh, Europe or Greece or uh, the world. So, as Costa told us earlier, we can use without any problem Chinese science, Indian science, or non-Western science. I think also that we can use it also for the Balkan science, the, the science in the Balkans, for certain periods like the 19th and the 18th century. Because during the, these periods we assimilated, we introduced and assimilated the Western science, the Newtonian physics, for example in different way in uh, Turkey, in Greece, in Bulgaria or Romania. So under this uh, view we can tell for this certain periods Bulgarian science or Greek science or Turkish or Ottoman science, but not in general. But for these certain periods, periods I think we can we are legitimate to use uh, this kind of uh, Characterization of science in uh, our country. Broader aspect of uh, <coughs> nationalist uh, meaning of this uh, term. But uh, of course, there are some <coughs> problems and uh, questions. Uh, who is a uh, uh, Serbian scientist? Serbian scientist in Zurich, for example, is Serbian scientist or Serbian science or, or not, for example? But it's very large topic to discuss now it well only people who everything is professor Bishanuku rules books, institutions, program, etc. etc. That's impressive. Maybe it is a wrong impression and if it's not it's written I hope it's not so it's it's wrong. Because if not then I wonder if it's normal situation. It was a an impression looking at the presentation. He's editor of everything. So he is. Mm -hmm.
We must have a custom to make such, such a art and to share it between our community. And in the November of this year, we gave a, a historical scientia honoris causa to Dr. Ethinius Nicolaidis from the Institute, as you know. And I used that to give him diploma. And to give him pin, which is the part of the diploma. Congratulations for your effort. Just to read a few sentences officially when I present you the diploma of our Soviet Society of History Science. Our society bestowed a great honorary member, historical Scientia Honoris Causa, to Dr. Atinius Nicolaitis from the Institute of Neo Hellenic Studies in Athens. The degree of honorary member was established through the bylaws of the society with the following description. Honorary members are elected, are elected by the assembly of the society from among those who are rendered meritorious service to history of science and continuing to the advancements of the Serbian Society of History and Science. This is the highest honor bestowed by the society and Dr. Nicolaidis was awarded since for many years he acted as one among the most important and widely known European historians of science. Dr. Nicolaidis contributed greatly to the preparation of the Serbian historians of science. This year, last year, uh, he has presented in Belgrade exhibition dedicated to the Arctic Interim mechanism. And since 1998 to 2002, he participated in the project the introduction and development of scientific thought in Serbian ways since 18th century until nowadays. Uh, so on, so on, etc. In uh, 2004, as a result of this project, the book Science in South Eastern Europe during the 19th century was published. Before Dr. Nicolaitis, this award was presented to Dr. Robert Pavlo, director of the Center of History of Science and Technique in Liege, and Dr. Edward Kocinski, director of the St. Petersburg branch of the Institute of History of Science and the Russian Academy of Science and Arts. Recipients received a certificate and the honorary member.